Imagine you're an automotive manufacturer trying to make the best car ever. Obviously, it'd be electric. It has to be comfortable, yet sporty. It has to have great cargo space, yet still look great. That vehicle might look something like Porsche's Taycan. By all accounts, an incredible EV. However, when you compare it or any other EV like it to a Tesla, you begin to see their massive Achilles heel. And that is the CCS port and by proxy, Electroamerica. So in this video, we're gonna be exploring charging infrastructure and talking about why Tesla's supercharging network might keep them a step ahead of the rest. Now, if you're newer to electric vehicles, you might be thinking, how could a nationwide network of ultra-fast chargers be an Achilles heel? Don't we need these to enable long-distance road trips and get back and forth across the country? And obviously, you're right, we do need infrastructure. But in my experience of driving electric vehicles coast to coast, and anyone who's experienced driving multiple different electric vehicles can tell you there's a major difference between driving a Tesla and using Tesla supercharging network and using Electro America to get across the country. And it all comes down to accessibility, speed, and reliability. Right now in the US, we effectively have a case of Apple versus Android. At least for now, other EVs can't charge on Tesla's network. And in the inverse, Tesla's can't charge on the CCS network. Being the first to bring a fast charging EV to market, Tesla designed their own proprietary connector. With Tesla, there's just one form factor for both slow and fast charging. It's small, lightweight, and really easy to use. Just plug in and go. But for everyone else, there's this thick boy, a CCS port with a J1772 kind of port on the top and two high power connectors on the bottom. It might seem like a small detail to some, but in practice, Tesla's cable is about 10 times easier to plug in. But that's just the port design. First, you've got to find the chargers. Many non-Tesla EVs like this Mustang Mach-E make it difficult to find details about high powered chargers in the first place. For example, if I wanted to go to this Electrify America station two miles away, I can't quite see how many chargers they have and how many are currently available. As a result, I'm often looking at my phone to determine where to charge with other apps like PlugShare or this one, a better route planner. However, once you've located a CCS charger such as this Electrify America, you could still face a myriad of issues. First, you've got to look to plug into the fastest stall for your vehicle without blocking someone else. Most vehicles today charge at about 150 kilowatts peak, but some charge at 350 kilowatts. And if you plug a 150 kilowatt car into a 350 kilowatt stall, you're blocking the faster cars from charging at their highest speeds. That's not all though. As an Electrify America user, you still have one important thing to consider, and that's this Chadmo port, which is great if you own a Nissan Leaf, but terrible if someone's already plugged into this CCS port. You see, Electrify America has only one of these at any given station, and if someone plugs into the CCS port here before plugging into any of the other ones, the Nissan Leaf user is out of luck. Let's say you finally plugged in. This is an area where we found more problems arise. Let's say you've got one of the best new EVs that came with plug-in charge. Currently, it's only available in the Porsche Taycan, in the Mustang Mach-E, and the Lucid Air. And you've gone ahead and activated it within the app. Well, this is gonna sound weird, but there's a chance that you shouldn't have. It turns out, if you plan to charge on Electrify America more than twice a month, you should be signed up for Electrify America's Pass Plus a membership program that cuts the cost of each charge session by 25%. The problem though, with Electrify America, you can't have both the member rates and plug and charge turned on at the same time. So you either get the peace of mind that you can just plug in and go, or you'll need to deactivate plug and charge entirely and activate each charge session from your phone to ensure the cheapest charging. I'm not trying to say that supercharging Teslas is perfect. There's still confusion between the 75 kilowatt urban superchargers, the 150 kilowatt chargers, and the 250 kilowatt chargers, but for the most part, it's mindless. You just plug into your navigation where you want to go, and the car will tell you if and where you need to charge and for how long. Now, in terms of reliability, Tesla has 20 urban superchargers here at this location in Malpitas. Electro America has four stalls, and currently only two of those are operational. On top of all of that, when we participated in NBC's Charge Across America, we experienced many chargers where one or both of the charge cables were providing slower than expected charge speeds. So we went out to Electra America to learn more about what they're doing to improve this experience. Thanks for meeting me today. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Thanks. Thanks for coming. So jumping right into it, we had uh, uh, some not so great experiences during Charge Across America sometimes. Uh, fortunately, your network covers almost all the country, almost all the places that we traveled. We were on Electra America. 
We had some issues out there. Uh, I think I mentioned we had uh, some derated sessions. And so I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about why someone might experience a derated session or even an, an anomaly where the session isn't functioning properly at all. Yeah, so uh, we uh, are constantly monitoring the network. So we have a network operations center that's staffed 24 seven. Uh, that consists of about 30 engineers that are just on different shifts monitoring every every session on the network and looking for failure points, looking for uh, sessions that might be stopped or, or, or in this situation derated. Um, so the derating de uh, that, that, you, that you have experienced at a couple of sites is affecting select locations. Uh, and it's actually a challenge uh, with uh, the, the, the cables, uh, the liquid cool cables, which we have rolled out, um, you know, thousands of them um, across the country. And um, that's uh, 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 an industry-wide uh, issue with a, with a sensor within the cable uh, that needs to be replaced. And so what the chargers do when they sense that, that there might, might be uh, something wrong with a, a, a temperature sensor in the cable is that they go into a derated state. And we have all the diagnostic capabilities in the back end of our network to identify which cables they are. And we have affected a campaign to make sure that we're either changing out that sensor or, or changing out that cable to make sure that no one uh, uh, needs to experience uh, derated sessions. Okay, cool. Because, yeah, it was definitely something that uh, towards the end of our trip, ironically, over more on the West Coast, I did start to see some new cables. Sometimes one cable was replaced on one side and the other one wasn't. Do, do both cables have to be replaced to fix that problem? or It only affects select select cables. So, you know, when we when we know of the issue, we have a campaign active that's that's rolling out right now to, to resolve. What kind of redundancy is Electrify America like, you know, having the two cables, for example, or within the cabinets? What kind of redundancy is Electrify America thinking about and, you know, problem solving? I've even seen some batteries start to get installed at some locations in case the grid's down. I don't know. Yeah, what, what so, so fundamental to the model of, of how we, we roll out sites. So on, on highway sites, we're on average about 70 miles apart across the country. And then we're obviously in much, much uh, higher density. Uh, our locations are much closer together in high density in metro areas as well. So there's even a level of redundancy there that we're building into the network from a location standpoint so that if there was an issue with one particular site, that there's another Electrify America site within, within close proximity. At the site level, we have uh, sites like in uh, Valley Fair and in, in, in Silicon Valley, they go up to 14 stalls and we're planning uh, even bigger sites uh, from there as well. So redundancy is obviously important at a site level so that you have multiple charges available. Um, it, it, also in the case of that there are other people waiting to use those, those charges as well, which we're seeing more and more on the network these days. Uh, and then when within within uh, each uh, within each uh, charger, you know we have uh, on the, uh, the the models that you that you see behind you here, we have two cables that adds a level of redundancy, of course. Um, and I think what you're referring to is within the charging system itself, we have uh, power modules that convert uh, AC power to to DC, and uh, those uh, are also there's numerous in each power cabinet, so we have a level of redundancy built into the power. Okay. Cabinet. So if one of those fails, the charger keeps working. You know, if I was supposed to get 150 kilowatts, one fails. Now I'm getting 100 and something. That's that's how they're architected. Correct. Cool. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Yeah, Thank appreciate you for your time. It. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I recognize through this video, I've talked a lot about how Electro America could be better, but the good news is they're working to improve their network with faster chargers built-in redundancy with their cables and with backup batteries, and by increasing the density of chargers. Additionally, CCS is a universal plug, so there are plenty of other providers growing their own networks. On top of that, Tesla's currently piloting a program in Europe to allow other EVs to charge on their network. Probably that'll come to the US with some kind of adapter in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.